Yeah, it's actually really good to be here, dog. You know, like, I couldn't take the TTC, but man's made it over anyway, so I'm excited, dog. <laughs> Say, what's going on with your accent there, Jared? Oh, me? Well, I'm actually Canadian. I'm a Canadian or man. I'm from Toronto, but I'm ready. I came, I came to play, so let's do this, all right? <laughs> Wait, you're a black Canadian? Obviously, dog. I mean, like, yo, there's thousands of us. I'm sure you've met a few of us before. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Never met one. We're all laughing in here. Stephen, how do you think uh, Drake did on Saturday Night Live? Oh, I thought he, I thought he did great. I mean, he's, uh, he's, you know, he does have acting chops. He does have some comic chops. And he can do these kind of meme things so so much better than anyone else, really. So SNL is kind of perfect for him. That's mm. kind of like the, the high, that's exactly where he should be. And he did great. I thought Black Jeopardy was hilarious. Also, it's just so weird to see how he's exporting Toronto to the world. In, in unprecedented ways. I was in New I York last so. week and I saw views on Fifth Avenue and 21st Street. Like there's the CN Tower, him on the CN Tower on Fifth Avenue. It's just so Every strange time I'm to in, me. I'm in New York, I wonder if they actually like him more there. Then they here. Them here. Yeah. It's, it's in New York, they go hard for Drake. <laughs> they go hard <laughs> yes. uh, for Drake. You said, Stephen, that in American pop culture, Toronto is emerging as one of the major black cities. I think that's what's starting to ha I, I think that's what's starting to Well, that skit seems to imply that, yeah. right? Like, it's, in it's interesting. It's like, the, and the thing that's so fascinating about it is that, you know, when you look at that skit, it's essentially a, uh, it's a very old form of comedy. It's like from the 80s, where it's like, white people drive a car this way, black people drive a car this way, right? And then, inserted into the middle, like that's what Black Jeopardy is. It's like one cliche after another that you probably didn't even know existed, played for laughs. And then right in the middle of it is Jared. And he makes all these other cliches seem nonsensical. And I think that's really, that's exciting. You know, well, for a new, yeah. a new Canadian cliche to be being born, uh, and and for that to be kind of destabilizing the 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 cliches that we see in the rest like of the world. It feel like something special and interesting was going on in that particular sketch. And Director X uh, echoed that same idea a few weeks ago on the show that right. that Toronto is emerging as a as a new major black city. Uh, Max, did you laugh during that episode? And what did you oh, think? I died. There was not one <laughs> skit that right. I was not like like I was I was crying. Like it was it was so so funny. And what I liked about SNL specifically is that this is this is what makes Drake such a cultural phenomenon. Like this is a man who could sell millions of records, but then go on SNL and be like super goofy and open and really warm and just like make us fall in love with him in a completely different way. And going back to the question that was presented in the beginning, you know, is it affecting the music? I think it all kind of comes full circle because, you know, you need Hotline Bling to have Hotline Bling memes. You need a views record to have views memes and you know yeah. it's all in good fun it's Drake, all of a piece yeah, yeah. you know mm -hmm. i just feel like um the way in which drake goes about the marketing it, it's all very fun it's not like and i was talking to a friend about this yesterday it's like you know drake is one of those rappers that could just be be himself it's not about being like the hard aggressive rapper it's like you know it's like i'm a rapper i'm a goofball it, it's 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 just all he one. manages and I think, it all yeah and fairly I think seamlessly that's what makes him such a gem in Toronto. That's why, like, I think we go as hard for Drake as we do because it's like, you know, he's just good at everything, you know. Rachel, did you appreciate all the Canadian references? Yeah, I mean, it was super fun. And again, like, it's just, I mean, it's so endearing that Drake just, I mean, he's probably one of the first Canadian celebrities to not, I mean, I don't think people dismiss their Canadian roots, but they sort of just move on from it. Um, and I think that the fact that he minded, the fact that he did a very particular Toronto accent, because yeah. yeah. I think that there is this, um, you know, the, the, the when Americans try to do the Aboot accent, and I feel like Drake actually, like, perfectly identified um, this, like, Toronto character. And it was it was lovely, and it was funny. And he's almost becoming, you know, to Max's point, he's almost becoming, like, like almost like a Justin Timberlake in that he's an overall Absolutely. performer yeah. that, that he... And I, and I wonder if part of it is, you know, he's a rapper from Canada. He's coming as an outsider already, and so he can actually just kind of create his own self and superstar. It's already a new identity. So. It's all, yeah. Exactly. So there's th so he doesn't have to you know he doesn't have to sort of stake a claim in old territory. It can be you know here he is and then you know and again I think it's not just in the fact that you know he can act and he can and, he, and he's a rapper but it's also you know representing the Raptors at this moment of yeah, I mean, last totally. night's last yeah. night's game notwithstanding <laughs> um, this moment of ascendancy for the Raptors as well. So I also think that there just is this sense that just you know uh, Drake is kind of like our second prime minister in a way. 
<laughs> what's, what's brilliant about it, like that skit in particular, is that rather than like creating this identity and being really forceful and like, bra- you know, bragging about it, it's like his name is Jared. <laughs> And he says, and he says dog a lot, right? Like, you know, he says dog too much and he's like fully willing to be embarrassed, Mm -hmm. right? Like fully willing to be like, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to plug in to these like codes of like extreme strength. And, or, you know, it's like totally willing to just be goofy and vulnerable. I think that, I think that's really exciting. Do, does anyone here think, I mean, in trying to manage all the balances here going on as the unique kind of entertainer that he is, that he is on one side of the line or the other? Is he more of an innovative mu- musician at this point or is he more of a pop culture phenomenon? Does it matter what side of the line he's on at this I th- point? I mean, I, I would say in a way that anything that, I mean, who knows what's going to come, but I would say in a way that... You know, there was there was a, a, a piece in Slate a little while ago talking about the fact that, you know, Drake just keeps making Drake albums, that he's not sort of pushing things, perhaps like, say, Kanye, who's just doing sort of weird things with every new new album and sort of pushing things and, and trying different things, that Drake sort of has a sound and he's kind of stuck with it. Um, but I think that where sort of the innovation comes from is kind of staking this claim as this, like, you know, performer with, you know, a finger in every in every pie. I don't know, you know. He's innovative as an entertainer, period. Yeah, yeah. and I think that may- maybe the music has suffered in a way, or maybe people like the product well enough that he doesn't need to tinker with it. He's mm. not, you know, he's not that kind of artist that wants to push the envelope with every with every record. 